The truth is, Lady Gaga is one of the biggest pop stars in the world, blowing up all the way back in 2008 after releasing her mega hit record Just Dance. Gaga has had a luxurious music career, even becoming a movie star. Many people know Lady Gaga as a strange mega pop star who pushes the boundaries of creativity. But what if I told you that her strangeness isn't just creativity? Join me in this episode as we uncover the dark truth about Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga was born in 1986 in New York City. She grew up in an upper middle class home in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Gaga was into music since a very young age, learning how to play the piano at the young age of four. She learned early on how to train her ear musically, helping her become better at creating music. Her parents encouraged her to pursue her music dreams, enrolling her in a creative art camp while she was a child. Gaga attended a Roman Catholic all-girls school, where she would start acting in school plays, furthering her desire for music and acting. In 2003, Gaga would gain early admission to the Collaborative Art Project 21, a music school part of NYU in New York City. Gaga would end up living in one of the dorms at the college, but would later drop out in 2005 to pursue her music career. This is the same year she would end up meeting and collaborating with hip-hop artist Melly Mel. Around this same time, she would decide to form a band with a couple of her NYU school friends called SG Band. They would play gigs all over Lower Manhattan, growing a small local buzz at the time. Eventually, a talent scout by the name of Wendy Starland recommended Gaga to a music producer, Rob Fuseri. Rob would help develop her sound and improve her songs. Eventually, Gaga and Rob would even end up dating for a while. Rob even gave her the name Lady Gaga after he thought of it from hearing the song Radio Gaga. Rob would get to work using his music connections to get Gaga signed, and in 2006, after sending her music to Joshua Sorubin, the head a and over at Def Jam Records, Gaga would be signed to Def Jam Records. Unfortunately for Gaga, she would be dropped from the label just three months later. Rob would continue to push Gaga's music while she continued to improve on her music. Gaga would eventually meet performance artist Lady Starlight, who would help Gaga build her onstage persona. They would perform together all over downtown, getting Gaga much needed exposure. The pair would even perform at the 2007 Lollapalooza Music Festival. Rob would eventually get Gaga's music in the hands of music executive Vincent Herbert. Herbert would sign Gaga to his record label Streamline Records, an imprint under Interscope and UMG. Gaga would also get a music publishing deal with Sony Records, allowing Gaga to write for some of the biggest artists in the music industry, such as Britney Spears, New Kids on the Block, and Fergie. Eventually, Akon would hear Gaga's music after he heard her singing on a reference track. Akon decided to take her music to Jimmy Iovine, who was the chairman and CEO of Interscope Records. Akon convinced Jimmy to sign Gaga to a joint deal between his record label, Con Live, and Interscope. After signing this deal, she would get to work on her debut album called The Fame. The Fame was released on August 19, 2008, and it was a massive success, reaching the top five position in the US, as well as the number one position in seven other countries. The album contained their massive hit song, Just Dance and Poker Face, establishing her presence in the music industry. This is what you may already know about Lady Gaga, but the truth is far more sinister. I have come to believe that Lady Gaga sold her soul to the devil for fame and fortune. The reason I have come to this conclusion is no other than Lady Gaga herself. Her music and image point exactly to who Lady Gaga is serving. Lady Gaga, like many big pop stars that are created by the major labels, openly show their Masonic alliance. Time and time again, we see that Gaga is showing the world that she is a Masonic puppet being used to spread the Masonic agenda. We can see Gaga openly showing the one-eye symbolism in many different photos and music videos. I haven't seen an artist this open with the one-eye symbolism, as there's plenty of photos of her showing her alliance. Even more proof that Gaga is a Masonic puppet is this photo here. This photo was taken at a five-star hotel named Andes London Liverpool Street. This hotel happened to have a secret Masonic lodge hidden within the walls of the hotel. The lodge would eventually be discovered by the hotel and invited Gaga to have a photo shoot within the Masonic lodge. It is clear that Lady Gaga is an industry plant created by the record labels to push the Masonic agenda. We can see this even in the start of her career, with her very first hit record, Just Dance. The thumbnail for the music video on YouTube clearly says it all, as we once again see Gaga proudly showing the one eye symbolism. All throughout the music video, Gaga can be seen placing her hand over one of her eyes to clearly show she belongs to Lucifer. The video even starts with Gaga covering one eye, as the scene changes to a woman who is wearing a checkerboard dress. We can even see Lady Gaga with Akon in this video, sitting on the couch with a Baphomet statue right over their heads. Akon is another Masonic puppet who has created his entire convict image to sell records. 
If you guys would like to see a full video on Akon, comment Akon below. If 700 people comment Akon, I'll make sure the next video will be on him. We again see the thumbnail of another one of her early hits, Poker Face, once again showing the one eye symbolism. She can be seen in the music video throwing up her Masonic alliance in many different scenes. We again see the same thing in her Alejandro music video. The entire Alejandro music video is full of satanic imagery. In the video, Gaga can be seen wearing horns on her head representing Lucifer. She can also be seen again showing the one eye symbolism throughout the music video. As she does the one eye symbolism, dressed like a nun in a red and white garment, and it clearly shows an inverted cross on it. She even goes on to swallow a rosary in the music video, pushing the satanic imagery to the max. This has to be one of the most satanic music videos I've seen, but it still doesn't come close to her music video for her song Born This Way. In Born This Way, the video starts with an upside down pyramid with Gaga in the middle folded in a position with her legs over her head. If you look closely, they angled her to look like Baphomet. They are showing her falling from space as Lucifer did when he was casted out of heaven. In the intro of the music video, Gaga talks about a new race of people created by aliens that face no judgment and have endless freedom. I believe Gaga is referring to Lucifer being casted out of heaven and tricking the people into self-worship and moral freedom. We can see that Gaga was obviously referring to Lucifer as she can even be seen with horns implanted on her forehead. This video once again is full of demonic imagery, clearly depicting her as Lucifer. We can see the same theme in her music video for her song Applause. In her music video for her song Applause, we see Gaga wearing wings, showing herself as a fallen angel, as she again can be seen doing the one eye symbolism. It is clear that Lady Gaga sold her soul to be who she is today, and I have come to believe that she might have played a part in the passing of her best friend, Lena Morgana. Lena was close friends with Gaga, who was a fellow upcoming pop star who passed away after taking her own life. Lena was working with the same producers Gaga was working with, Rob Fasari. It is believed that Rob was dating Lena and was pushing Lena's music career before he discovered Gaga. I don't know, Lena broke my heart, I guess, in a lot of ways. And she filled my heart in a lot of ways. I miss her. Lena was set to be the next big pop star, with Rob using his connections to get her signed. It is believed that when Gaga came along, she stole Rob from Lena and started dating him herself. Before this would happen, Gaga would co-write some of Lena's songs and help with her music. Something happened between the three that left Lena no longer living. Just two months before Lena would pass away, after falling from the roof of a hotel building, Lady Gaga would release her mega hit album, Fame. Many people pointed out that it appeared that Gaga stole Lena's entire career and image and maybe even sacrificed her for fame and fortune. Even Lena's mother has come out to claim that she believes Gaga stole her daughter's image and sound. In my opinion, it does appear that this is possible, as when you look at Lena's work, you can see the similarities. Gaga went on to have the career that Lena was meant to have while Lena was forgotten. Gaga has shown plenty of times that she is an occultist, so having something to do with this to me wouldn't be far-fetched. We have seen who Gaga has become and what she represents. A while back, I did a video on Marina Abramovich who is known for doing tons of satanic rituals that she calls art. In the video I did on Marina, I talked about Lady Gaga's friendship with Marina and both of them participating in Marina's spirit cooking. There's a photo that shows Gaga and Marina eating food that is shaped as human bodies at one of Marina's spirit cooking private parties. The bodies look awfully real as they show the world what they are into behind closed doors. This shouldn't be surprising as Gaga has shown the world that she is into blood rituals all the way back in 2009. In her 2009 VMAs performance, we can see Gaga with fluffy feathered horns on her head. She is dressed in all white while blood seems to pour from her dress. By the end of her performance, she is covered in blood. This is obviously an initiation ritual done in front of the rest of the stars who took the oath while the world watches. It is no coincidence that this is right at the beginning of her career. Like I said multiple times on this channel, many occultists practice blood magic, with many female occultists believing that bathing in blood can keep them looking young and beautiful. I believe this is exactly what Gaga has been doing, as she has been accused of doing just this in the past. I read that a housekeeper that worked in the famous Intercontinental Hotel in London reported that after Gaga checked out of her hotel suite, she left the bathtub full of blood. The housekeeper believed that Gaga was bathing in the blood, performing satanic rituals. She even reported to the concierge, who told the housekeeper to just take the image out of her mind. Many large publications cover the incident, trying to cover it up, claiming that it was most likely prop blood or she was doing it for her performances. To me, 
I find this as clear proof that many celebrities in the industry perform blood rituals. In my opinion, Lady Gaga is a Satanist who performs black magic on the regular. She aligned herself with Lucifer and has been serving him ever since. We can see Gaga loves to show her Masonic connection with her VMA's performances. I did a whole video on MTV and I exposed them as a Masonic owned company. So it's not surprising that many stars have been performing Satanic rituals for the world to see at their award shows. Just like Gaga's performance in 09, in 2010, Gaga once again showed that she's a satanic puppet when she decided to wear a dress made out of meat to the 2010 VMA Awards. It cannot be any clearer to me that Gaga is a masonic puppet who sold her soul and might have even offered her friend for fame and fortune. She has openly shown the world on many occasions that she has chosen to serve Lucifer, but still her fans worship her. I honestly feel that it's hard to deny with all the signs that are right in front of our faces. I know still most people would dismiss this video and continue to blindly consider themselves fans of Lady Gaga. As I always say, we must not allow these artists to manipulate us and guide us to a burning end. We must stay aware of their manipulation tactics and keep them from affecting our minds. We must also remember to help those who can't see the truth, find the truth. Thank you for watching this episode of The Truth Is. If you would like to further support the channel, join me on Patreon, the link would be in the description. If you join before the 28th of this month, you could be entered to this month's monthly raffle, where you can win a shirt, a cash prize, and even pick a video topic. Also, please leave a comment below on your thoughts on this video and on any future topics you would like to see me cover on my channel. If you like this video, please hit the like button as this helps other people find these videos. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of future videos. Please follow me on Instagram at the truth is or one and on TikTok at the truth is. I will gladly appreciate it. Thank you. Goodbye.